Welcome to College Panel 2023. My name is Lisa Bowman and I'm in the Family Support Office at Nye House Education Center. This evening event is being hosted by Nye House Education Center, the Briarwood School, and the Houston branch of the International Dyslexia Association. So a little information about Nye House. For 40 years, Nye House Education Center has been a trailblazer in solutions for overcoming obstacles to literacy, including dyslexia. Today, we are a nationally recognized leader in implementing the science of reading. We provide evidence-based professional development for educators, and in the Family Support Office, we offer information and resources to families and students. We also provide direct services to adult learners. So a few events upcoming you might be interested in. Our virtual dyslexia simulation will be Tuesday, mm -hmm. February 7th. Um, the third annual run for dyslexia is Saturday, February 25th. And in March, we'll host Dyslexia 101, where you can learn more information about reading instruction and what type of reading instruction might be most appropriate for students who may be considered dyslexic. And then on March 7th, Dyslexia 201, just provides you some hands-on experience in learning the vocabulary and procedures that's involved in a structured literacy lesson providing dyslexia intervention. Next, I would like the opportunity to introduce you to Jennifer Hopkins, the president of the Houston branch of the International Dyslexia Association. Hi, thank you. I am Jennifer Hopkins. I am the president of the Houston branch of the International Dyslexia Association. At the HBIDA reaches out and educates the Houston community on dyslexia. We raise scholarship funds for teachers, therapists, counselors, and families to attend our conferences and symposiums for little cost. We raise scholarship funds to qualifying applicants for educational diagnostic testing. We publish a yearly resource directory that includes facts about dyslexia, researched evidence-based articles on strategies, apps, links, and helpful websites, and schools that support dyslexia. Finally, I wanna point out that on March 4th, we will have our spring symposium, so please join us if you can. Now, I would like to introduce Tony Lazores for the, at the Briarwood School, the Middle Upper School Counselor. Thanks, Jennifer. Hi, everyone, I'm Tony Lazores. I'm the counselor for Middle Upper here at Briarwood, and it is my distinct pleasure to host this uh, college panel. At Briarwood, we believe every student should learn and be taught in the way that he learns best. And so we have some Briarwood students and other students on this college panel, um, hopefully to give you some insight and information as to what students with learning differences do a little differently to get into college, but also to be successful and stay in the college. I would like uh, each of the panelists to introduce themselves, their school, which is listed here, but what high school did you come from and what are you currently majoring in? If you could do that starting with Ayana, please, I'd appreciate it. Hello, my name is Ayana and I attend um, UHD, University of Houston downtown, and I'm a junior and I came from Madison and I'm, my major is being a science teacher. Okay. Carson? Hello, uh, my name is Carson McConnell. I go to Sam Houston State University. Um, I'm a freshman and I came from Briarwood and, uh, and I'm studying construction management. Thank you. Hi, Leah? my name is Leah Martin and I go to Trinity University. I'm a sophomore. Uh, I went to Bel Air High School for the IB program and I'm studying theoretical economics and mathematical finance. Natalie. Hi, my name is Natalie Samin. Um, I go to Austin College. I'm a senior. Um, I came from the Briarwood School and I am majoring in psychology and minoring in sociology. And Olivia? Hi, I'm Olivia Truelock. I go to UIW. I'm a freshman and I came from Briarwood and I'm studying kinesiology. Thank you. And thank you all for willing to be here with us. Um, I want to start off with um, what did each of your universities require of you, because I think parents want to know this, 
to get up to be a part of their student services. So what did you have to have? Like your psycho ed, what else did you have? Um, Olivia, let's go backwards. Let's start with you. Um, I have dyslexia and dyscalculia. Um, so just based off of my testing and how I've learned from Briarwood. Okay, and what did, so you provided them your psychoeducational testing? Yes. It, did they require anything else from you? I don't think so, not that I remember. Okay. And what accommodations were they able to provide? So I have extra testing on for tests, extra time on tests and assignments. Um, I have a note taker. Um, I get teachers' notes, and I'm able to use a calculator since I have this uh, calculator. Okay. All right. Ayana, can you tell me the same thing? What did your school require? You said, I know that you went to HCC first, right? So yes. did you go through their um, student services as well? I did, and um, going going into UHD, it was a smooth uh, transition. All of my um, information that I had um, at HCC, it kind of just transferred, um, and I pretty much had to um, um, submit the same thing. That's what my parents did when mm -hmm. they helped me get into HCC, um, and then what I have is I have a note taker. I have extra time on my test and um, exams. Um, and then also, too, um, if I need some more, like, assistance on assignments, I am, like, my professor will come over and um, pretty much explain, explain in detail so I could get it because I have dimensional dyslexia. Okay. Um, Natalie, what did you need at Austin College? Um, so pretty much the same thing as Olivia. Um, just those forms and um, any records I had from previous schools. Um, stating that I did have a learning disability. Um, so that's that's pretty much all they needed. And um, for my accommodations, I get extra time on tests and then um, I get notes from classmates um, as well as if I do need like a room to myself when I take a test, I can also have that. Um, and I'm very lucky, I also get audiobooks. Um, from the center as well and anything I need um, to help with that and then we have a writing center so um, they're in partnership with that so I can go to them if I have um, like writing accommodations and stuff um, so yeah okay Liam so uh, Trinity if you have a history of displayed need, right? You can just submit uh, your 504 that you had, say, from a public school or a private school equivalent to something like that. Uh, if you don't have that, uh, you can, of course, get testing done. I believe it's actually available through the school uh, if you want. Uh, and in terms of my accommodations, uh, I have pretty similar testing accommodations to the rest of the people. In addition to uh, at Trinity, we have lots of like, digital aids. So uh, things help you write essays, uh, audiobook libraries of textbooks that sort of thing okay and Carson so I have dyslexia and so for the accommodations I just from Briarwood coming to Sam Houston I gave Sam Houston like a disability center my a list of accommodations that I had from Briarwood and I also got extra accommodations so some of the accommodations I had were extra time on tests and quizzes um, like a place to take my test and say, instead of taking it in the classroom, um, I could record my classes. And for some of the tests, I had it read to me because I had trouble reading everything. Um, and if a professor like had a problem with my accommodation, the Learning Disability Center would help me out and would email and clarify everything. So that was very helpful. Okay, does anyone get um, any additional like tutoring services or anything like that? Natalie, you're shaking your head, yes. Ayana, you getting that too? Olivia, you're shaking your head. Carson, you're shaking your head. Liam, do you get that as well? Uh, yes, but at Trinity, they're available to all students as opposed okay. to an accommodation. Okay, is it, a for, is it something you have to pay for or is it? Available? No, it's just okay. available. Just available. Is anyone paying additional for tutoring? Okay. I have to read all you guys' heads so quick. So yes, no. Okay. So no. Okay. 
Um, so that's good. So whether it, you have an LD or not, you're able to get tutoring. Okay. I know that's important for those of you that have math issues. Olivia, I believe you the one that has dyscalculia. Okay. Um, so that's important for parents to know. Um, is there an accommodation that you got that you are now, especially you sophomores and I mean, you sophomore, junior and seniors that you're no longer using? Like, have you learned how to do school enough that you don't need a particular accommodation that you've received? Natalie, Liam, are you still using everything you have had? Uh, yeah, I've had accommodations for a while, so they're pretty well tuned. And you're using them? Yeah. Okay. Natalie, are you still using everything from freshman year? Uh, yes, yeah, pretty much everything. I got um, extra time for quizzes, but I don't use that anymore. Okay. Um, and Ayana, you're using everything you always had. Uh, yes, ma'am, except for um, my professors were like email me like the notes. Mm -hmm. I have gotten it down pack on how to uh, take notes. So that's something I don't use. Okay, so tell me, let's go to notes. How are you all keeping notes? I heard you all say you get a note taker for the most part, but are you writing your own notes? Is anyone using a smart pen? Y'all have to say yes or no so the audience um, can hear So you. For, for me, so I record my classes. And so when I get home, um, I listen to the like the- The lecture of earlier? The lecture and presentation that was given. And I write down every little single word that was said in class, whether it was a side conversation. And so I mark down and I highlight all the information. And then I go through my test, test book um, go through and find other information and then plug them together and then go into another notebook and put all those notes in one. So I have those main general notes. So you've actually listened to the notes, written the notes, and then rewrote the notes? Yes, ma'am. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. Does anyone else do that? Okay. <laughs> when I take notes. It's kind of similar to Carson. I do, well, majority of my classes have been online, so I do uh, save the audio, And but for me, I put my notes into OneNote because okay. yeah, I just use OneNote, so yeah. Use OneNote. Yes, uh, Olivia, what are you doing? Um, I just write down, I do have a recorder just in case, like, um, I recently broke my right arm, so it was very hard to write, but I had a recorder, so I used that, so it came in handy. And you also have copies of notes? Yes, from um, my professor as well as students. So do you use those notes to add to your notes? Yes. And then, so are you making another note from the two of those? Yes. Okay, so you're kind of doing it twice as well. Yeah, but not as in depth as Carson, but I would say. Okay. Yeah. Natalie, what about you? Yeah, so I'm really lucky um, at Austin College. Um, almost every single professor will use um, a PowerPoint slide and almost everything they have discussed will be on that PowerPoint slide and um, they give us access to it um, through something similar to like Blackboard. Mm -hmm. um, and that is really helpful, but I also am allowed to record lectures um, during class. And then um, I typically uh, share notes with classmates and stuff, but I also take my own notes. Um, so I pretty much do everything I can to <laughs> make sure I have all the information. So do you listen to the recordings and then rewrite your notes to go with the professor's notes? If I have time, I do, but typically I don't have time. I usually just um, hold on to those recordings for open note exams, um, which I'm allowed to use that for. So I typically just save those for um, the finals and exams. So it sounds like all of you are pretty much reading notes, listening to notes, and writing notes. Okay, that's a lot of work, but that's good for people to know because with dyslexia, you got to do what you have to do, right? Um, how many of you think that you study a whole lot in comparison to high school or about the same or maybe little? Tell me what you think. Um, Natalie? Yeah, so um, I'd say I feel like it really depends on like the major 
that you're studying. But for me, I, I'm a psychology major and sociology minor. Um, most of the times I have more papers than exams, um, but I typically will have more exams for psychology than I do sociology. But I'd, I'd say I do study a little bit more than I had to in high school, um, just because at Austin College, um, it's a liberal arts school. So there's no exam that will ever have multiple choice on it. So everything is written. So you kind of have to really know all the information um, to prepare for the exam. So I will definitely say I do study a lot more in comparison um, to high school. Okay, Liam, what about you? Uh, I would say it's about the same or perhaps even a bit less compared to IB because at a I'm just a lot more focused on like a singular subject area now. So it's just simply less to do. Okay. What about your freshman year? Do you recall? Uh, so for our first semester, we take a six hour class called uh, the first year experience. So there, there wasn't that much studying for that. Just two other classes besides that. In my second semester, uh, those were mostly math and statistics classes. So not a bit of studying for that, but not much. And you enjoy math, so it may come easier. To yeah. You. Right. Um, Carson, what about you? Uh, I studied the same as I did in high school. Okay. Um, it didn't really change because uh, for my major, a lot of it is not things you know. It's more of like you have to sit there and think. And so like one question lasts you like 30 minutes. So you you can't really study for what the question is going to be. Okay. And you're studying construction management, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And are your test um, essays or multiple choice or are you getting a combination of both? Um, I get a um, like a little bit of both. Okay. Uh, multiple choice and writing. Okay. Ayana, are you studying more now or less than high school? I'm sorry, it's a little noise. Um, I feel as though I'm studying more than I was because in high school, um, I really didn't really study um, because coming to Nye House, um, I had to kind of, the transition was really hard. So I, I study now than what I previously did. Okay, Olivia? So I am a freshman still, so I'm not taking too hard of classes yet. So I don't really know, can't notice a difference from studying in high school, but I'm sure, you know, the years to come, I'm going to study a lot. Okay. Because um, that's a question that we get often is how much more studying or do you study more? Um, many people in high school, you guys know, think that you're studying every single day, all day long, um, but your schedule is really flexible. So tell me what your schedule looks like. Ayana, let's start with you. What, how many days a week are you going to classes? Um, so I scheduled uh, mine Mondays and Tuesdays. And typically I have, well, I was taking uh, three classes. So I have two classes on Monday, one class on um, Tuesday. And they're only roughly like maybe two hours to two and a half hours. So okay. Not- Carson, what's your schedule? Um, so I have class every day of the week except for Saturday and Sunday. Um, I start from eight every day and I go until two or three. Some days, some days I'll go into night, which will go to around eight at night. So it it sucks, but um, it's some of the classes that they're longer classes. So like three hour class um, or four hours. So. Okay. Natalie. What's your schedule? Um, so every semester is really different for me. Um, sometimes I'm really, really busy. And sometimes I have m- more time in the world than I know what to do with it. Um, but I'd say um, the most recent semester, um, my schedule is pretty busy because I also am in extracurriculars. Like I'm in a sorority. Um, so that takes up most of my time as well. But Um, I definitely, I don't study every single day, but I'd say, um, I definitely use the weekends a lot to do that. So, um, I'd say like the first half of my day can be very busy 
with um, morning classes. So, yeah. Okay. All right. And Liam? Um, so I take, at least usually I try and take around 18 hours a semester. So I have classes every single day. Uh, and I usually try and take my classes from about 10 o'clock to four o'clock every single day. Okay. That's a pretty long, that's like a job. It's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, a question came up when we were talking about notes a little while ago, and someone wanted to know if writing notes helps you more than listening to notes. Who can answer that for me? I can give a go at it. Go for it. Um, so um, I think it really depends on the person, but I am not good at multitasking at all, no matter how much I try. Um, I either have to like write notes or listen to the lecture um, so that's why I record my classes is, um, so if I record my classes, then I know I am going to write, um, for that lecture. If I don't record my class, um, then, you know, it's kind of like the opposite, mm -hmm. but, um, it, it can be beneficial to some people. Um, I know some people that, uh, like to do it because it helps them remember some of the crucial points in the lecture, so. How many of you feel like writing notes helps you remember it better, especially those of you with dyslexia? Carson? Uh, no, I like I like to listen to it, uh, to like the lectures, because I'll sit there and I'll try to write it, but I get caught off guard or get distracted, and then I just like zone out. So my since I'm recording the classes, it really helps out. So like I have no distractions. Okay. And do you feel like your comprehension is better when you listen as opposed to write? Um, you and Carson, what do you think? Uh, yeah, sort sort of. It, de it depends because, you know, there's some professors um, who, like, talk fast or slow. So it's, like, kind of hard to pay attention, but I manage. Okay. Um, Olivia, what do you think? Reading? I mean, listening or writing? No, I would say listening for sure. Also, like, depends on the professor. If, like, the way of their speaking or, like, their voice helps me, me, like, remember more or, like, just, like, how they teach. Okay. Ayana, listening or writing? Uh, for me, listening and um, just remembering uh, uh, classes that I had last semester. I know some professors um, will like, you know, talk, I guess, their lecture. And you'll have some professors that will have like um, a PowerPoint. So for me, I like to listen and actually like see it. Um, sometimes when I write it down, I get kind of confused and yeah. Okay. Liam, listening, writing. Okay, I might, I might say something a little controversial here. Uh, I don't like either. Uh, I usually end up typing my notes, uh, which is something you have to be careful about. Uh, so you don't write down precisely whatever the lecturer is saying. Mm -hmm. but I find that uh, because of all the programs and software you can use to help you manage your notes, connect them together, reorganize them, study them, I find that just typing them straight away works best for me. What programs do you currently use? So I, uh, I use a program called Obsidian to type my notes. It's a markdown editor. And then I combine that with Todoist to task going back to the notes and studying them later. Okay. Anybody else using any other programs? Okay. Um, I think I asked earlier, no one's using a smart pen. So you're not writing and recording. Okay. All right. Um, how many of you use a binder system, a way to keep everything organized, your syllabuses, handouts, etc. Olivia, I'm laughing because I know that you do. I, I know it without a doubt. So I'm going to pick on you. Are you using a binder system, Olivia? Um, kind of. I have folders for each one of my classes as well as uh, notebooks, and they're all color coordinated. I have each like folders to put them all in, like folders inside a folder. Um, they're all labeled. Um, yeah, so I'm very organized. If I did not have that, I would be a mess. I wouldn't know what to do. Yeah, that really helps me. For those of you in the audience, because I've been Olivia's counselor since she was in eighth grade, I know that about her. So that's why I'm picking on her. And I know that she probably has influenced Carson. So Carson, are you using a binder <laughs> system? Um, 
So my mom actually, you know, gave me stuff to to be organized. Um, as going through Briarwood, my binder has always been a paper on top of paper. As soon as I open it, I slide a paper on top. Um, so I have that drawer, you know, that has all those papers unorganized. But I do have folders. I do. They're all labeled. And uh, but they're they're like thick folders that <laughs> I have no idea what's in it. But I don't know. Uh, so you need Olivia to come over and do it again. Yeah. yeah. Yes, they've done yes. that by the way. Liam, what are you using to keep organized? So most of our uh, assignments, textbooks, everything at Trinity is digital nowadays. So uh, again, probably to doist and just file management on my computer. Okay. Natalie? Um, yeah, so very similar to Liam. Um, most of everything is online. Um, like we have something that's called Moodle, which is equivalent to Blackboard. Um, so all of our papers, readings are most likely going to be on there as a PDF. Um, but I do have an agenda um, and like an agen agenda planner and um, a desk calendar. And I cannot live without those. Um, <laughs> it would be a mess without them. But um, I am able to organize everything that I need to do in my agenda um, so that I can like submit things online and know when to submit things because most of the time I'm turning things in um, online rather than um, to my professor in person. Okay. And Ayana, what are you using? Um, so I use two things, kind of something similar to Olivia. I have like notebooks and folders because that helps me. And also um, to like save my notes, I use OneNote and I just have like tabs and that's how I or stay organized. Okay. Um, someone uh, asked a question, what do you do if your professor says something like, I do not have any notes for this class to give you? What do y'all say? What do you do? Most of you said you record, correct? So if they don't have notes for you, you record the lecture? Okay. Um, and most of you are using a little mini recorder. What are you using? I use my phone. Phone? Yeah. Now we you use your phone? Yeah, I, I use the voice memos app on my phone. Okay, Carson, what are you using? Uh, I use my phone or a recorder. Like or, those little recorders. Oh, mini recorders? Yes. Okay. Olivia, do you record, did you say? Yeah, the same as Carson. Mini recorder? Okay. Um, Liam, someone asked the programs you use, Obsidian and Toolist. Did you, did Trinity provide those or did you discover on your own? So uh, both of those are something I discovered on my own. Obsidian is free and Todoist is a subscription. Okay. Thank you for that. All right. Um, so what's been the most difficult thing about going to college, transitioning from high school? What is the, like, oh my gosh, I wish someone had prepared me for this before I got here. Um, Natalie? Um, yeah, so I'd say the one thing would be homework. Um, you know, like in high school, it's pretty much like you come home and you do your homework, you know, have dinner and then go to bed. Um, college is not really like that for me, at least. I do my homework in the morning, in the afternoon, at night. Like any any chance, any free time I have, um, I'll do my homework. So I, it's, it's very different from high school, from like, you know, um, just having that really strict schedule. And you kind of have to be, hold yourself accountable to that. No one is going to tell you to do your homework and stuff. So you have to kind of remind yourself like, oh, okay, I need to set aside an hour um, at four o'clock to um, finish this one assignment I have. So I think that's been one of the biggest um, challenges coming into college. Okay, Carson? Um, definitely just waking up to go to class. <laughs> um, that That is a struggle also because, you know, you don't have somebody to like wake you up in case like the alarm goes off. 
um my my roommate actually uh i i occasionally wake him up to uh get to class sometimes so me and him have each other just by the rope just making sure we both get there in time so all right liam mm. what's the biggest challenge I, I would have to agree with uh, carson is definitely waking up for class on time those 8 30 is hit different in college okay uh ayana what would you say is the biggest challenge I would say the same. I have to agree because it's the, yeah. It's you don't have to be at school early in high school. Yeah, but it's just something about college mm -hmm. is different. Like, it's very different. You don't have, um, like, you don't have no one. I don't want to say, like, babying you, but kind of in a way, like, you don't have no one, like, there, like, oh, go to school, do your homework. You know, you just have to. You do have it. to be organized. Yeah, you have to do it. Because <laughs> if not, you will show <laughs> in your grades. <laughs> Olivia, what has been the biggest challenge? I'm a morning person, so I can't relate to them. But um, yeah. <laughs> my challenge would have to be all, like, the writing and papers. Like, I'm not the strongest writer, but I love to write. It's just when it's writing something that I don't want to write or I don't like to write, it becomes very challenging. Um, and just like the format of it all, I'm just trying to, you know, wrap my head around it. So. How many of you are writing? Um, I know here at Briarwood, we teach MLA for the most part. How many of you are writing in a whole different format, like APA? Natalie, what are you using? Um, so I use APA um, for both psychology and sociology. Um, I did have to do, I took an economics class because um, I was required to. And um, that was the first time I was actually introduced to Chicago style, um, which is not my favorite, but <laughs> it was really, it was really interesting. Liam, are you pretty much Chicago style? Yeah, pretty uh, much. Because that math major, when you said that, so Chicago style, for those in the audience that don't know, it has footnotes, it has all sorts of little intricacies yeah. that um, after having two masters, I still can't figure it out, oh, no. but um Liam, how did you learn Chicago style? Are you using the Writing Center? And I'll get to you. Okay. So I, uh, in my uh, digital tradition, have uh, not done any of that. So basically, what I use is something called LaTeX. And you just type in the text you need, and then uh, it formats it for you. Just in Chicago style or any style? Any style. Did y'all write that down? <laughs> Can you say it again? Can you say that again? Yes. Uh, it's called a uh, L A T E X latex or latex is a I think it's the proper pronunciation. And so uh, you there's, type in your I type in a paragraph. Yeah. It's basically you type it in as plain text. There's like these uh, formatting commands you put into it, uh -huh. and it just does it for you. Oh, I needed that in grad school. Yeah. And so um, Olivia, what are you what are you working in? MLA, APA, APA, APA. Ayana, what are you? MLA and, yeah, MLA. MLA. Okay. And Carson, you said? Uh, I do MLA and APA. Okay. So, yeah. That is the norm. So that APA change is, is a big change because it's different than MLA. There is some, some differences. Are y'all running across professors who are just fanatical about the formatting of your papers? Olivia's saying no, Natalie's saying no, no. Ayana, you're saying yes? Yes, I have ran across one last semester and he was a lot, um, <laughs> yeah. Yes, he, I had a professor in college that took two points for every APA error. So you literally could lose a whole grade just by not formatting properly. How many of you are using the Writing Center? Yes? Is there anyone yeah, not? Know. Is there anyone not using the writing? I, system? I haven't. I've been meaning to do it, <laughs> but I'm so scared to go in there because I honestly don't know how it works, and I'm scared that someone's gonna read over my paper and be like, "Oh, like I'm really scared to go in there." But I know I should. Um, who uses the writing center that could encourage Olivia to use it, Natalie? Yeah, um, I I actually go there now to like work on grad school applications. So um, I 
I've only been like once to like work on like a assignment or an, a paper, but um, all the tutors, at least at my school, are really, really nice. Um, they're really encouraging and very approachable. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, they're there to help you. Like if they didn't want to do their job, they like, they also have to get hired and like, I don't know, at my school, it's like a whole thing. You have to get a professor's recommendation. Um, you have to like do an interview. So um, if they weren't nice, they definitely would not be there. <laughs> yeah. They're approachable. You need to go, Olivia. Um, so I asked you about your challenges. Let's, I want to switch gears for a little bit. What are y'all doing for fun? Carson, I think I'll start with you. Um, so I'm in a fraternity. And so I spend most of my life hanging out with my fraternity. So, and I'm actually, so I actually, my roommate went to Briarwood as well. And so me and him are both in the same fraternity. Okay. So we hang much, out every day. How much time are you spending um, between fraternity and school? Like, is it 50, 50? 60, um, 40, what are we doing? Definitely during like the beginning of when I was trying to join a fraternity, I spent probably 80% with the fraternity and 20% of school. Okay. But now that I'm officially like in the fraternity, it's 50-50. Okay. Anybody else uh, joined a fraternity or sorority? Natalie, okay. Yes. What year yeah. did you join, Natalie? Um, I joined my freshman year. Ooh, yeah. another one. Okay. Yes. It was it was very challenging, but I was really lucky. Um, my sorority, like one of our pillars is academics. Um, so we had mandatory study hours we would have to go to um as new members and as active members as well. So I still have to go to that now. Um so academics, like it it wasn't too difficult to balance because it was constantly like reiterated to me that like that's the most important thing that I have to do um and I I study with most of my sorority sisters like we have study sessions together so um we kind of get to hang out and also do that as well simultaneously so it's really nice okay Ayana did you join a sorority no but what I do for fun um I um help my brother cook he has his own cooking business and I love to cook. So I typically help him. Okay. Olivia, what are you doing for fun? So I play volleyball for my school. Um, so that takes up a lot of my time as well as I've joined some clubs, um, like a gardening club. Um, <laughs> yeah, just like little fun clubs to keep me busy. And does that help you meet people? Oh yeah, to meet new people. I've learned, uh, I've met a lot of people that have came close to me from clubs and volleyball. Okay. Liam, what are you doing for fun? With 18 hours, I don't know if you get fun. Oh, uh, <laughs> no, fair point. Uh, lots of tennis and swimming. Okay. No. Uh, club or, I mean, like, what are you doing? Is it are so? You doing uh, the swimming is a club sport, but Trinity uh, is weird with some of our club sports in that, uh, if it participates in a league that like the school's official team doesn't, they'll like, so they'll send me to UTR tournaments, whereas the normal team plays at ITA tournaments. Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, Fraternity and Nelly. So, okay. I've asked you all about fun. Um, how many of you are living in dorms? Carson is, Olivia is, Liam is. Uh, Natalie and Ayana, where are you living? Um, I am living in an on-campus apartment, um, with three other roommates. Okay, and Ayana, what are you living? Uh, I'm living at home with my grandmother. Okay, the reason I'm asking is a lot of freshmen look forward to leaving home, right? You guys mentioned that you don't have that person to wake you up anymore. So what's the big challenge about living away from home for the first time, besides having somebody wake you up? living with a roommate. So Carson, you said you're living with a former student at Briarwood. So you obviously yes. knew that person. Um, yes, how has now living in a small room in comparison to home, how has that been? So um, pretty much the only thing that was difficult was waking up 
but everything else was like fine because I I cook for me and my roommate. Um, I clean our entire dorm. I don't let him clean anything um, because my mom taught me how to clean our house. So I clean the house perfectly. Um, But it's definitely like the noises that you hear, like people, you know, have parties next to you and you can hear, like you hear everything and people walking down the halls or people got dogs and like it could be like 12 at night and you'd be like studying and all of a sudden you hear dogs or people laughing upstairs and you can't focus. So that was definitely a struggle. That's very different. Um, Natalie, you're living in an apartment with three other people. How is that? Yeah, so um, I'm lucky that I don't have a fourth roommate so far. Um, but three other people, it's it's been all right. Um, I think uh, the biggest challenge is really just like finding roommates that are very similar to you. Um, and that share similar desires, like, um, you know, cleaning, like having a clean apartment for me is very important. So finding people that, um, you know, take care of their um, living room and don't leave stuff behind, doing the dishes, stuff like that. So I think um, just finding people that are very similar to you will make your living situation a lot easier. Okay. Liam, you live in the dorms? I do. Uh, so. I know Trinity has housekeeping service. We have housekeeping service, walk-in closets, the whole, <laughs> whole nine yards. Uh, honestly, the, the only thing I'm really uh, deprived of is maybe a kitchen. That, that's what I miss the most personally. The food at Trinity is uh, not good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Olivia, yeah. how many roommates do you have? Um, I started off with one, but I now have, I've moved out of my hall and now I'm in a different one and I have my, a single room, which okay. I'm very happy about. <laughs> I don't agree with Liam. The food, it's, it's not the best. So um, I've been wanting a kitchen. That's also another reason why I moved to the hall that I did because they do have a kitchen. Okay. Um, Carson, how's the food at Sam? Oh, it's great. It's great. I eat there all the time. I I go there breakfast, lunch, dinner. It's like a buffet. You know, <laughs> I couldn't ask for more. But but I I cook for uh, my fraternity and for like people when we get get togethers. So I do get to cook some of home cooked meals for myself. So that's good. Okay, Natalie, how's the food at Austin College? Unfortunately, it's not good. Um, and it's in a really small town. So like we we do have like places to go out and eat, but I'm I'm really happy that I have a kitchen. Um, because I think I've been to the dining hall about four times this entire semester. Um, so I just make food at home, but I think that is like one of one of the things I wish that we had was good food. <laughs> Okay, so no one but Sam has good food. And Ayana, you're at home, so you have home-cooked meals. So that is cool. And Actually, you, I cook for myself, but yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, but you like to cook, so that works out. <laughs> um, is there a Starbucks on every campus? I know people, students out there listening, you got to have a Starbucks. Um, what else is on campus to eat? Sam, I know, just redid their UC Center. Yes. So uh, all on campus. Sam has, you have Jack in a Box, Water Burger, Sonic, uh, Chick fil A. You have Subway, you have Panda, you have Steak and Shake, you have Starbucks. And then you have like, um, it's like little sh- stores that you can go and like get like sandwiches, hot pockets, ramen. It's pretty much like a store on campus, which is nice. Isn't there a Sabaro's pizza or something too? Oh, there's a whole bunch of stuff all over campus. Yes, I know Sam, I just took students on a tour not too long ago and I, they had just redid their um, food. What does Trinity have on campus? Uh, we have these things called pods, which are like convenience stores pretty much. A Starbucks and a Steak and Shake in addition to the dining hall. Also, there's like a rotating like sort of pop-up restaurant as well. 
in like okay. a salad place. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, now, uh, thankfully, Trinity is like in the middle of San Antonio, so you can just walk somewhere else. Right. Mm. Natalie, is there a Chick fil A or? So I probably, <laughs> um, my school is really small. Um, I can walk anywhere within five to 10 minutes. Um, and there's only like a thousand students. So we have the dining hall, a very tiny convenience store um, that has snacks um, and then a star, like a small Starbucks inside of it. And then we have um, a something called the Pouch Club, which does sell beer. Um, if you are 21, you can get beer there on campus. Um, and they have things like pizza and um, onion rings. Um, but that's pretty much it. So you're kind of on your own. Um, that's why I always raided my parents' um, fridge and pantry before I left school. Because there's <laughs> not, not much there. <laughs> okay. Olivia, you're also in San Antonio. So what's on campus to eat but what else so we have a starbucks a chick-fil-a a little convenience center um we have luciano's which is like a little pizza pub place and then we have a mr beast burgers and that's about it um i'm right next to trinity so right. i mean yeah you can walk really anywhere um but i haven't really explored a lot of san antonio so i don't really know a lot of places to go eat but okay all right um, let me check. Hold on. Let me check the chat real quick. I want to make sure I'm not leaving out any. Okay, good. We've answered all of that. All right. Um, so if you had one thing to share with uh, parents out there, and students who are listening, what would you share with them um, before they left high school? Oh, question. I'm sorry. I do see a question. How many of you took the ACT and how many took the SAT? What did you take, um, Liam? I took the SAT. SAT. And how many times did you take it? Well, I think I ended up taking it twice. Okay. Uh, Natalie? Um, I took the ACT and I only took it once. Okay. Carson? Um, I took the ACT and I took the TSI because I had to take the ACT a lot and still wasn't getting the scores. So. Okay. So you also took the TSI? Yes, okay. ma'am. Olivia? I took the ACT, and I believe it was one time. Okay. Ayana, what did you take? Um, I'm the same as Carson. Okay. ACT and the TSI. Right. Okay. Just curious about that. Um, so if you had one thing you could share, uh, what would that one thing be? Like, what should every student know before they head off to college? What is that one thing? Natalie? Um, I'd say the most important thing Um on like your very first day, even your very first day, go up to every single one of your professors and introduce yourself to them. I'd say that is like the biggest thing. Um, what I would do is I would email my professor to meet with them and to talk about my accommodations. And that way they could get to know me better and I could get to know them better, see like how they operate, what they expect of me as a student. Um, I'd say that has really made my college experience so much easier because all my professors know me and um I I know exactly what they're looking for and it's it's really important to do that because it also helps when you go to office hours um because that way you kind of they already know you so you feel less intimidated to go and ask for help so I think that's like the biggest thing um I've learned to do okay Ayana what is the one thing you would tell students and parents you got to do it first thing before you, when you start college? Mm, pretty much the same thing. And don't be afraid to go to, um, um, I can't think about it. I can't remember the word, but um, to get accommodations. So the support what, services. Right. So typically that's what I do. So I could kind of get all of that out of the way. And then the same, just introduce myself to all of my professors. Okay. Carson? Um, mine would have to be, so for the accommodation, for your accommodation is to definitely put in, like you can, uh, ahead of time for like exams, because like when exams happen, it gets filled up, make sure to do it 
and like a week or two weeks ahead of time schedule for that because for finals I forgot to do that and so I had to take all my exams at 7 a.m so that was no, not great the morning <laughs> yeah and I'm not a morning person <laughs> okay um Liam What's okay, that? so this is going to sound strange. Um, don't be afraid to, like, disagree with your professors, especially if you're at, like, a liberal arts college. Uh, a lot of teachers at those colleges try and teach with the Socratic method and sort of want you to explore the ideas with them as opposed to them just telling you what to think. So, uh, it, like, don't, don't be afraid to disagree with your professor. Okay. Olivia? Um, don't, like, load up on your classes like your first semester so yeah just like don't pick a whole bunch of classes because yeah for your first semester you don't really know like going into it so I would just say like get your hours that are required and don't really go more than that unless you feel confident okay um or any of you the freshmen that are on here so Olivia and Carson are you taking more than four classes uh, uh, yes okay um we won't even talk about Liam and his 18 hours Natalie how many hours are you taking right now and you're a senior yes so um right now I'm doing three classes and um I'm doing two independent studies okay and Ayana how many classes are you taking um I'm taking four okay um all right I'm sorry questions just came up hold on um, someone wants to know what TSI, and so the TSI stands for the Texas State Initiative. It is a test you take for placement. So if you do not get the scores on your ACT, let's say in reading, um, you don't meet the benchmark, then you will take the TSI to see exactly where you are in your reading levels. And there are several classes of levels and you need to get through those levels or take the TSI again to get into English 1301. So the TSI is a placement test, not an entrance exam like ACT. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Uh, uh, so this is a good question. At previous Nighthouse panels, someone said they sent a photo of themselves to their professor before the first day of class with their accommodations. Have any of y'all ever done that? No. No. <laughs> Liam's laughing. No. Ayana, have you done that? Um, I did that once when I started HCC because I was new to the whole college thing and I have really bad anxiety. So I just feel as though if a professor just see my face and then my list of things, I'll be good. But now I don't do that. You just go introduce yourself. Yeah, because I think it's now it's like a bit weird. <laughs> um uh, at your each of your schools, who notifies your professors initially? So, Natalie, you said you go up and introduce yourself, but had you not done that, does the support center at Austin College do that for you? Or are you expected to do it? Um, so, they're I, I'm kind of expected to do it, but um, they're aware of like those that have accommodations. Um, but most of my professors, since it is a small class. Um, they they do kind of expect us to um, go and discuss it with them. Um, so the, does the learning center give you, like, this is Natalie's accommodation, so do you have something, or are you just at lib and telling them what you have? Um, they do. I'm, um, I believe they do have forms um, that state what I... Um, what accommodations I can have, but the professor likes... Um, the student to come and talk to them because in some situations like I've had to take a quiz um, after class because it there was just not enough time in class for me to do it so like situations like that they prefer to know what accommodations you have in order for a situation like that if it happens um, they can work with you. Okay Carson does Sam do it for you or do you have to do it? So Sam, so um, this Disability Center, they email my professors and they put me on the email as well. 
but I also have to go and give a physical copy of my accommodations to my professor and talk to them about it just in case if they have an issue of something that's there. Um, and just to clarify, because an email doesn't exactly say everything. It just shows your accommodations. It doesn't show who you are and why you need it. Sometimes they like to ask you about, about it, which it's not bad because they're not trying to be mean or anything. They just kind of want to know some extra background. I know when I taught college, I needed to know so that I could adapt my lectures to ensure that I am covering all bases. So if you need me to re-explain or whatever. So I think it's good that they want to know. Liam, what about Trinity? Do you take it? They take it? Or you do both? So at Trinity, what you do is you request the accommodation center to send your professors your accommodations. Okay. And then if the professor like wants to talk to you about it or whatever, they email you. Okay. Ayana? Um, so it's a little bit of both. Um, sometimes, well, pretty much my professors I have had, they're aware of you know, my accommodations, but like, I always like to kind of have like a little one-on-one -on -one so they can, like, if they have questions, I can answer it and stuff like that, so. Okay, Olivia, what does Incarnate Word do? Yeah, my um, accommodations were emailed to my professors, but they don't know exactly like what the accommodations are, so I have to go up to each of my professors and tell them. Okay. Um, a question I always get in the chat, I haven't looked again at right now, but do you guys all buy your books, rent your books, and do you do it through the school bookstore, or do you use Amazon? What do you do? Liam, I'll start with you. Uh, so typically I buy my books, for example, uh, Cengage, you get Cengage Plus, uh, Pearson, Pearson Plus. Um, but you can also get certain textbooks from our student accessibility services, if not all of your textbooks, through the audiobook program. Okay. Natalie, do you buy your books, rent your books, or a little bit of both? And where do um, you So I most of the time I'll rent them. Um, but some of the times I will like buy the book because I'll need it for other classes. Um, like for one of my site classes, we needed an APA manual book, and I just decided to buy it because I knew I was going to kind of need it um, for other site classes. But um, since I also have like audiobooks available to me, I will sometimes not um, do either. And um, the book is kind of just free to me through the um, learning center. So, yeah. All right, and when you rent them, do you rent through Amazon or through the bookstore? Yes, so through Amazon or my school's um, bookstore. Okay, Carson? So at Sam, I use, um, it's called the Bearcat Bundle. You get like all these books for your light class, which is kind of nice. Um, and then I do have to pay for that, but it also comes with like a payment when you pay for your next semester or I get free books from like friends. Um, <laughs> so they're already, they're already used. So like some of them are like torn, like ready written in, but at least I don't have to pay money to get more books. Okay. Olivia? Um, it's the same like Carson, but I don't like borrow my friends' books because we take like different classes. But sometimes I've had to buy um, some books because of just like, they just haven't came in yet. And I need them for my classes. So. All right. And do you ever rent any books? I haven't yet. Okay. And Ayana? Buy or rent or both? Um, so I do, I rent, but lately um, the program called TWC, they have been paying for my books. So I have been fortunate. I don't have to pay for books like that. They cover everything. Okay. And um, when you rent, do you rent through Amazon or through the school? Uh, through the school. Okay. If they um, I know I obviously I've talked to a lot of college students during the college panel and many, many people rent their books now, um, which for parents out there, it's about $25, $30 a semester. Some are more. Um, as a parent, I've bought books for $200 and it was a code. 
um, for them to get online. So that it, it's a, a really big deal. You do have to shop around. There's Chegg and other um, places out there that you can buy, but Amazon seems to be having a monopoly on the books. Um, so what happens if the student has both dyslexia and generalized anxiety? Um, the parent that wrote that, if you could explain what you mean by that, but I know um, we have students here at Briarwood that have both and they are accommodated for everything. Counseling is available at every school uh, represented here. Um, and most students can go to counseling whether they have an accommodation or, uh, or not. Um, so I'm not quite sure what you're meaning by that question. Um, and is there any, so anything else that you guys can think of other than that question? That's the only one in the chat that I see. I mean, I could add to it um, from the professors that I've um, had so far. They all bring up that if we have like something that we need to say or like a presentation, they always bring up like if you have like really bad anxiety or just like really bad problems, like you don't have to do it. Like they always make sure we're comfortable doing um, the things that we're asked to do. But it's that's pretty good for the professors I've met so far. I'm going to say, and I know that you have anxiety. So have you challenged yourself and done the presentation anyway? Yes, yes I always do it anyways. Okay. Uh, and I hope you don't mind me sharing you have anxiety, but <laughs> yeah. it's great. Um, yeah. Does anybody else have anxiety and they've gotten some passes? Uh, uh, Natalie, I've known you since eighth grade too. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I... I've done like all my presentations. Um, most of them have been group presentations. So that kind of helps, takes like the anxiety um, off a little bit. But um, my classes are very small. So at most, um, there'll be like 30 students in a class at most. Um, so I think like being in a smaller setting has really helped me um, like be more comfortable doing presentations. So yeah, it's it's definitely helped a lot, but yeah, I've kind of just had to push through it sometimes. But um, I my professors are very nice, but they they never say that we can't really do it. It's kind of like, you gotta gotta push through it. Yeah, you're at the biggest uh, typical kind of public school. What is the average class size uh, last semester of like thirteen or one? I'm not sure your English class. My biggest class I had was actually my history class it was 80 students which was a lot he said it was the biggest class he's ever had but um and then my smallest was probably 20 okay so really just estimated on how many people decided to show up to class okay trinity small what's your average class size liam Oh, I've had I've had classes with as few as five people, and the most I think I've had was like fifteen. Okay, Incarnate Word is smaller. Olivia, how big has your biggest class been? My biggest class, I think, was no bigger than twenty-five people, and my smallest class was three people. Three. Yes. Okay. All right, Natalie, you're really small. So, biggest class. Biggest class, I think, was either 25 or 30. And then the smallest was, I think it was seven, maybe. Um, okay. yeah. yeah. It's not bad. And Ayana, you're at U of H downtown. It's it's a pretty decent sized school. So what's your biggest class? Um, I want to say like maybe 38 to 40 almost. And my smallest has been like 27. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and Teresa, I'm going to type uh, something to you and then um, and I'm gonna send it. Um, all right, so after I answer this question, I think that will clear up everything. Any last parting words for families that we didn't say already? Mm, I would just like to say um, as a student, well, transitioning I used to be scared to like say things or stand up for myself being like you know needing my accommodations or just speaking out um don't be afraid because it's your future 
you know, and if you need your accommodations, you know, stand by it. Okay. Anything else any of you have to say? So for me, I would say, say thank you to your parents. Like really respect your parents through like college. Um, and because I, I know I use my family to help me through a lot of things through college, like writing essays. And that is kind of a struggle because um, you do get mad at your family. And when you come home, it's a little awkward. Um, so, but just respect your parents through the whole college part. Um, it will make when you come home way easier. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any last other parting words, Natalie or Liam or? Yeah, I'll say always call your parents every now and then, um, you know, um, I'm sure uh, they're for asking for money. Yeah, I'm sure they're just as anxious as you are um, sending you off, but, you know, just call them. But also don't be afraid to take a leap of faith. Of faith. I really did not think I was going to go to college. Like I really didn't. Um, and now I'm looking at grad schools, so it's really funny how things turn out, but, um, you know, believe in yourself, know that you can do it, and um, there's always someone there to help you, so don't feel like you're alone. You had a really good counselor, Natalie. <laughs> I did. She's great. She's fantastic. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Um, as far as I can see, uh, Lisa, we have answered everything mm -hmm. in the chat. So there's one other question. Um, one was in the um, application process to applying to um, college. Did they um, provide the information that they had a learning difference for dyslexic in their application process or did they wait until they got to university? Good question. Um, Olivia, did you tell them in your application or did you wait till you got there? Um, kind of a both. I definitely put it in my application as well as went into the disability services and just like had a rundown with um, the lady in charge. Okay. Natalie, you're shaking your head. You told it was in your application. Um, yeah, I think um, one of the prompts, um, you know, kind of like touched on um, something where I could like talk about my um, LD. So um, I definitely um, did that for sure. Yeah. No, did you tell them in your application? Uh, yeah, on the common app, there's a section to do it for all of your schools. Okay. Carson, did you tell them before you got there? Uh, yes. Okay. And Ayana, did you tell them in your application? Yes, I did. Okay. All right. Um, I do see another question, Lisa. I haven't looked at it yet. Um, any suggestions on best colleges to apply to that have support systems for learning differences? Yeah. Uh, yes, I can certainly. Uh, the panelists are all at schools that have learning programs. Um, but I here at Briarwood, we take our students out on a tour. I have toured 60 colleges thus far. Um, Shriner is obviously one of the schools that Briarwood students go to. It's small. It has a lot of learning support. Um, I think we have three students right now at Austin College. We have about 10 at Sam Houston State. Um, we've only had two go to Trinity and we've had several go to Incarnate Word. Uh, U of H downtown is one of our favorites. Lamar out in Beaumont is one of our favorites. UT Arlington, UTSA. Um, and TSTC is becoming one of our big favorites. It's a technical school. There are campuses all around. Um, Rosenberg is the closest and newest, um, and they all have great learning support, but there's a plethora of many more. And so um, if you will email me at tlazores at briarwoodschool.org, I will be glad to share that information with you. And I will put that in this question for anyone. Um, Okay, Lisa, anything else? Um, no, I think um, I think our panelists have done an excellent job in answering questions and sharing their experience. It's always different every year and it's a pleasure um, to um, learn about their experience and how they are navigating and being successful. I agree. Thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, Laura, thank you for all your help and Travis, 
And I don't see anything else. I think I've answered everything. So all of you, please have a successful semester. And some of you, I'll see you on Friday. Um, and Lisa, thanks so much. Absolutely. And good night. Good night. Thank you. Bye, you guys. <laughs>